the sixth Solvay conference in 1930, the world's physicists gathered again to talk about quantum mechanics, and Einstein came up with an entirely new thought experiment. A new Gizanken experiment. Suppose we have a box containing a certain amount of radiation, and inside the box is a shutter which is opened by means of a clockwork within the box. At a certain time, the clockwork op will open the shutter for a very short time, allowing only one light quantum to escape, then it will close the shutter again. We then allow the light quantum to travel to a sufficiently large distance so as to ensure space-like separation when we make our measurement, and then we can either determine the position of the light quantum by looking at the clock, or we can determine the color of the light quantum by weighing the box and determining how much the energy has changed. For his part, Bohr once again interpreted this as a challenge to the uncertainty principle. So we weigh the box and thus determine the energy content of the photon, and from the clock we know the time that the photon was emitted, therefore we know both the energy of the photon and the time of emission, contrary to the uncertainty principle. It was a real shock for Bohr. Wait, wait a minute. I thought the hedgehog was Paul Ehrenfest, not Leon Rosenfeld. No, no, this is a completely different hedgehog. You can tell because it's wearing a hat. That's ridiculous. Look, just roll with it, will you? It was a real shock for Bohr, who, at first, could not think of a solution. For the entire evening, he was extremely agitated, and he continued passing from one scientist to another, seeking to persuade them that it could not be the case. That would have been the end of physics if Einstein were right. I will never forget the image of the two antagonists as they left the club. Einstein with his tall and commanding figure, who walked along tranquilly, and Bohr who trotted along beside him full of excitement. The morning after saw the triumph of Bohr. Bohr's triumph came in the form of an explanation of how the apparatus envisioned by Einstein would, in a real system, introduce uncertainty in both the energy of the photon and the position and the time at which the photon was was measured. So we weigh the box by means of hanging it from a spring, but as the weight of the box changes, the elevation of the box also changes. This changes its position in a gravitational field, which causes the clock to run at a different rate, introducing uncertainty in the time, as according to Einstein's theory of general relativity. Once again, Bohr's argument is a very powerful defense of uncertainty, but it does not actually address Einstein's real objection, which has to do with the effect of the measurement of, on the box on the state of the photon. Should we assume that the subsequent measurement we make on the box physically influences the fleeing light quantum now half a light year distant? That would be superluminal action at a distance. Of course, it is logically possible, but so very repugnant to my physical instinct that I cannot take it seriously. Accordingly, the light quantum has a definite localization and a definite color, and the quantum mechanical description is incomplete. Einstein's attempts to explain his actual objection more clearly were for naught, though, because no one was listening anymore. Everyone assumed that Bohr had won the day, and so Einstein was forced to find an alternative means of attack. So wait a minute. This whole thing is just Einstein making good points and Bohr answering completely different questions? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Humans are so weird. <laughs>